When you look at an industrial control panel wiring diagram, despite how many pages they include, they most probably consist of two sections. One is the power or main circuit, and the other is the control circuit. In this video, we're going to turn this control circuit into a PLC control circuit and draw the whole wiring diagram using ePlan, which is an electrical CAD software. Then you'll learn how to convert this electrical wiring diagram into a PLC program. The logic behind this electrical diagram is this conveyor system, which is designed to move some pallets toward a check wire machine. For that, it is equipped with a three-phase electric motor. Sometimes the operator must stop the conveyor, and sometimes turn on the conveyor in the reverse direction to move the pallets backward. Actually, this is a forward reverse motor control system, or clockwise and counterclockwise control system. It is possible to implement this mechanism without a PLC, but as you may know, these days, even for small size processes, we use PLC systems to control all of the mechanisms in the process, reduce the cabling works, and have more control over the process. Now it's time to take a look at the old electrical diagram and turn it into a PLC-based wiring diagram. There are lots of electrical CAD software, such as Automation Studio, AutoCAD Electrical, ePlan, and so on. But in this video, I used ePlan to draw the wiring diagrams. Let's draw the main or power circuit, as this is the common circuit between the old and PLC wirings. In this chapter, you'll gain some basic information about how to draw a wiring diagram with ePlan. As you see on the left pane, I have already created a new project. First, I need a symbol for a three phase circuit breaker with thermal and short circuit protection. Instead of drawing the symbol of this specific standard device by myself, I can access a quite complete library of the symbols by easily clicking the Insert menu and then click on the Symbols submenu. There are different libraries according to different standards. I open up the IEC symbol folder and then choose the Electrical Engineering subfolder. I click over the protection device, and here I should search for a three-phase disconnector switch. And here it is. I choose it and tap OK. After I insert the device, I should adjust the parameters. Other devices we need are two contactors, one for forward movement and the other for reverse movement. I just need the contacts of a contactor here and will use their coils on the control wiring diagram. As you see, when I want to place the contactor under the circuit breaker, the software automatically connects them. I place them here and here. I also need some terminals. I need four of them and I place them one by one. Now I need a three phase motor symbol to add to our circuit. I find it under power consumers and place it as well. The final action is to connect the mains power and the contactors. So here I should choose the interruption point icon and insert three arrows corresponding to the three phases of the mains power. I named them L1, L2, and L3. There are some angled and T connections on the right hand side toolbar helping to connect the devices. To connect the three phase power to the circuit breaker, I need this one. Okay, now we have power on top of the switch. To connect the reverse contactor, I have to change the order of two phases and connect it to the output connections of the forward contactor. 
In this way, as we'll see later in this video, the turning direction of the three-phase motor will be changed. As you see, I changed the order of the L1 and L3. I also have added a PE connection to the motor. So, we've done with the power section of the electrical drawing. To save some time, I've drawn the control circuits beforehand. This is the old wiring diagram and this is the PLC wiring diagram. This power circuit is applicable in both systems without any changes. So now, let's compare the two control systems wiring diagrams step by step. We have a video on how to read electrical wiring diagrams. I suggest checking out that if you haven't already seen it, as it helps you to get a better understanding of industrial wiring diagrams. Here, when we push the forward push button, the coil of the K1, which is the forward contactor, will get energized. And at the same time, the K1's normally open auxiliary contact will get closed to keep the circuit closed and maintain the power to the contactor's coil after we release the push button. The same thing will happen to the reverse contactor. This time, as the order of the two phases has been changed, when the K2 contactor gets energized, the rotation of the motor will be reversed. To prevent the contactors from functioning at the same time, their NC auxiliary contacts have been considered on the opposite circuit. This is an NC contact from the power circuit breaker, which cuts the power from the control circuit in case of overload or short circuit. Therefore, to keep the motor safe, the run commands will be removed from the motor immediately. By pushing the stop push button, as it has also a normally closed contact, we can turn off the process manually. So far, we saw that everything was hardwired. But in the PLC control systems, things are a little bit different. The PLC will replace and carry out the function of some of the hardware interlocks based on the software that we will write in the rest of this video. Therefore, I have updated the control wiring as you see. This page shows the PLC digital input card and the input signals that are wired to that. This page shows the PLC output card and the signals that exit from that. Let's compare these two wiring diagrams on the same screen. At the first glance, the input devices are more or less the same. The NO contacts that we have used for maintaining the power after releasing the start push buttons are no more of use. Instead, as we'll see, the software will perform their function. The software will also fulfill the function of these two contacts. Here, we have the output devices like contactor coils that are connected to the PLC digital output card. And these are the signal lamps of the push buttons. Now, it's time to write the PLC software. As always, I use the Siemens TIA portal, and if you want to learn more about that, you can easily find the links to the relevant videos in the description area. As always, I first define the tags in the tag table. The first four of them are inputs. And the last two are the outputs to the contactor coils. As you learned in previous videos, I should add an SR flip-flop for our electric motor. I'll add one for our forward movement to network one. I'll add another one for reverse movement to network 2. I then add the forward push button to the set input of the forward flip-flop. I also add the stop push button to the reset input of the flip-flop. As the stop push button is a normally closed contact, I had to add an NC contact for that. You can watch this video to get a better understanding of NO and NC contacts. To stop the motor in case of faults, I add the NC contact of the circuit breaker to the stop input as well. To save some time, I've done the same things to network 2. Now, I should add the software interlocks to replace the hardware we had omitted from the old wiring diagram. 
If you remember, we had a retaining contact to keep the power on the coil of the contactor after we release the start push button. The SR flip flop will do the same thing for us and latches the start command on the contactor. Therefore, we don't need to add anything to our software in these terms. In case that the motor is running in the forward direction and the operator pushes the reverse push button, the motor should not show any reaction. In other words, the operator should first stop the conveyor and then run it in the opposite direction. To do that, I have to add an NC contact of the Q0.1 to the start input of the flip-flop in series with the forward push button. And of course, I should add the NC contact of the Q0.0 to the start input of the flip-flop in network 2. Alright, now think about how and when to turn on the start and stop lamps of the push buttons and share your answers in the comments. In a future video, you will learn how to wire the actual electrical devices of this process, downloading this software to the PLC and simulate the process. I really hope you've learned something new from this video. If so, please like and share this video with your friends, colleagues or your students. Thank you for watching.